Good morning, everyone. Um, as mentioned, my name is Blake McDermott, and I'm going to be speaking about how the ACSC has been implementing machine learning to help better protect Australia from the unknown. Um, just quickly, a bit of about who I am. Um, as mentioned, I'm a senior capability developer within the Hunt and Incident Response Team at the ACSC. I primarily focus on developing new ways to detect, monitor, and prevent actors on Australian networks. Before this role, I spent five years as a senior lead incident responder within the ACSC, and some of you may have actually met me before. I'm also a hobbyist DFIR blogger where I try and commute, uh, contribute back to the open source community. Today we're going to be talking about what is machine learning and how is the ACC using it? How can this help you? As well as a two case studies in how we use machine learning. One through remote endpoints to protect networks at scale and the second to help analysts triage large volumes of disk images. The Australian Cybersecurity Centre leads the Australian government effort on cybersecurity providing expert support for all areas of cybersecurity to both industry and government. This can involve, but it's not limited to, incident response, advisories, the partnership program, and 24-7 support. The ACSC uses a range of host base agents, allowing us to get streaming data from networks we are supporting. The data we receive grows daily, especially in response to in incidents, and currently we can expect huge amounts of events daily. The more data that there is, the more potential compromises can get drowned out because it may only be a single event that alerts us to a compromise within millions and millions of events. When dealing with campaigns, it grows increasingly difficult to find the time to try and find the unknown. So how do we make the most of the data that we have? Machine learning helps us do what no number of analysts ever could, go through each and every event to check whether or not it seems suspicious. We create models to try and detect anomalous events. We're not necessarily looking for malicious events, we're looking for abnormal. Identifying obviously malicious can be easy, but identifying the higher level of tradecraft often means identifying tiny things that are out of the ordinary. This often makes helps make sure that we don't miss anything. Using supervised models, we're able to tell the machine learning models and train them to understand what good looks like and how anything outside of that is anomalous. Using targeted models, we can help reduce false positives. Rather than trying to capture everything in one model, we can design curated models to help spread the load. These models can help our analysts in the hardest to detect areas. For example, if we were looking for a single module load within a single process, that can be extremely difficult for our analysts without a starting point. We can curate these models around the MITRE ATT&CK framework, ensuring that we're monitoring every phase of the kill chain. Every network is unique. Software, admin practices, segmentations. The ACSC needs to be able to adapt quickly to active compromises, not spending time learning our surroundings. Anomaly detection can help skip a lot of the groundwork. Playing to the similarities across all networks, it requires minimal time to adapt and give our analysts immediate starting points. Generally, there are two types of machine learning models, supervised and unsupervised. Unsupervised just takes in data and learns on its own. That's not suitable for a lot of cases in cybersecurity just because of how wide and varying the data is. If we apply an unsupervised model on all of the data, it will try and group the activity into different sections, but it may not inherently understand it. Cyber just has too much data that is inherently random, whether it's through updates, security, specific network usage, or factors out of our control. On the other hand, a supervised model lets us teach what is good and what is bad. Bad data can be sourced from a large variety of places and can be tuned based on the activity that they represent. We source bad data from a large variety of sources, such as investigations, both current and historic, and intelligence feeds. We can also generate our own uh, events by playing around with publicly available malware and seeing how they interact with a system. 
using these models, we can determine the suspiciousness of the event. Each model handles this differently, some more simple than others. Some of these models are as simple as just a list of yes or no questions. Once completed, each model will return a score on how suspicious they think the event is. For example, with each module getting loaded into a process, if it's a known module, we can ignore it. That, we treat that as a known good. If it's a completely unknown module to us though, that's something that's pretty suspicious. Usually with the coverage that the ACSC has, there shouldn't be any surprises like that to us. So we would return a high percentage for how suspicious we believe that is. If we've seen it, the name before, but not the path, that's still suspicious. But we also have seen some custom arrangements before. Something like this would still probably want to investigate though, because it's likely to be module impersonation. If it's a known name and a known path, but just a different hash, then it's probably just a Windows update but still worth returning a low score just in case. Often a specific model isn't enough to confirm that something is suspicious. We can utilize the scores given by each model to create a threshold based alerting system. Storing results on unique processes, the suspiciousness score can link suspicious activities between multiple models. As you can see in the diagram, while the middle process did not show any inherently high scores in a single model, when grouped together, it is enough to break the threshold. If an investigation leads to a process that didn't alert, we can still look up the GUIDs afterwards to understand why our models did not find that to be suspicious. We need to be able to adapt to whatever tools we're able to use because we don't know, want to change our models for each environment, we've been implementing a common data model, OSM, across all, of our network, across all of our tools. This helps all of our tools output the same column names and makes it a lot easier for our models and our analysts to be able to query multiple tools at once. We don't always get to work within the comfort of the ACSC. Sometimes we're required to go on site of our client premises. Being able to export the weights of our models means that we can take this capability with us and do the exact same processing on site. There's limitations to this, especially with data going out of date as Windows updates. Models are also, but with saying that, models are also unidentifiable. So we can train on a specific investigation and there will be no client data within the model. It's all just numbers after the training. Worth mentioning as well that this can be done without paying a dime. This can also be implemented with any existing systems that you may have. All you need is the ability to stream data. Using a combination of any of these open source tools would enable you to be able to replicate this. So for our first use case, we'll go through how we use host-based endpoints and machine learning to protect networks at large. We use two different sets of logic for our host-based approach. Should a process be doing this? And should a server type be doing this? And by server type, we mean, should a web server, a domain controller, or a file server be performing these actions? Usually these types of servers are used in very distinct ways, which can make them easier to profile. While a process usually has set paths that it should load out of, network connections that it connects to, and processes that it executes. Some of the abnormalities that we might look for in processes include module loads, network connections, and child processes. Depending on the tools that we're using, we can pull apart the anatomy of a process to look for inconsistencies. The architectural point of view looks more at legitimate services being used illegitimately. This often catches living off the land techniques through persistence and lateral movement. Actors often use these tools differently than a standard sysadmin, which can be enough to trigger an alert. A common example is how actors and sysadmins move throughout a network. Admins often go from their workstation to a jump host and then onwards to other servers. While an actor, most commonly these days, will come in through a web exploitation. 
then move backwards through a network. We'll see a completely unexpected direction of the traffic. Despite the common media perspective, most actors actually hack as a nine to five. This can create anomalies within the active hours within the network. If we've seen a sysadmin suddenly active on a web server at 10 p.m. at night, that would stand out. Because the servers are usually stood up to serve one task and only one task, it can become very easy to track the expected behavior of executables and the paths that they execute out of. This can also work for modules, file modifications, and registry modifications. So to understand how we're going to view the results with machine learning, we're gonna to have to go through a little bit of statistics theory. And I know no one really likes math, so I'm gonna rush through this. In this diagram, we treat the actual value as the event, which is the top value, and the uh, predicted value, the value to the left, as our ML prediction. The boxes in blue show when we, correct, uh, when we pr predict correctly, and the boxes in red show when we're incorrect. To get the accuracy of our models, we'll simply count all of the results in blue and divide by the total number of results. Though common, accuracy normally is seen as a bad metric within machine learning. Let's consider the scenario of turning on your car. If you made a model to guess whether or not your car would turn on, you could predict that every time it will turn on. Technically, you would have a 99.99% accuracy, but whenever you were wrong, you would be wrong every time that the car didn't turn on. Precision is a metric that helps us tell how precise our guesses are. For every time we said that the car wouldn't turn on, how many times did it not turn on? This would be a very low score for us because we would never guess that the car wouldn't turn on. Our model is not precise in that aspect. For malware, this lets us know if the model is giving us too many false positives. In reverse, recall shows us how accurate we are on guessing actual malicious files. If we consider this is the car scenario, every time the car doesn't turn on, did we predict that it wouldn't turn on? Again, we would have a very low recall because we never predict that the car wouldn't turn on. With malicious files, this is how often we correctly label something as malicious versus how many times we are malicious. Uh, missing malicious files. And because of this, this is why we use not only accuracy, but precision and recall. Because we're targeting very specific aspects, we can expect very high results. As you can see in two of these models, we're expecting in the high 99%. With our models, our models are particularly precise, but it does take some fine tuning on deciding whether and when to actually call a file malicious or not. And that is why our recall is a bit lower. The bottom axis shows each iteration we train our model. To an extent, the more we train our model, the higher the results. But if we train it too much, we'll hurt our model. Training it to identify the specific uh, suspicious data that we've trained it on, but not real world suspicious data. But how does this help the ACSC and you? It can help the ACSC skip the baselining of a network by automatically ignoring the benign. This gives our analysts more time to deep dive in the areas that it, they need it, and rather than checking every nook and cranny. This also gives our analysts the opportunity to spend time to look at IOCs and TTPs approach rather than target so they can target what they look for while the machine learning looks for the unknown. In this second scenario, I will go over how we can use machine learning to help the analysis of disk images. Sometimes we will still need to go over good old disk forensics rather than through a host based agent. Disk forensics can be a slow process. So when you have multiple disk images, how do you ensure that everything is checked within a reasonable time? ML can help us by tackling the data through methods like investigating every binary, using anomaly detection for event logs, 
and provide the threads for further investigation. This can help us get some great starting points, identifying suspicious that we mentioned earlier. Some of these event logs can also be fed into our existing models, but others may require new models for analysis. So despite the ability for actors to move into memory and become fileless, we still see a large amount of actors relying on executables during a compromise. One ML model can iterate through all of the executables on an image, pull out the relevant information and pass it through the ML model. This usually is not enough to detect unknown malware, but it can grow, give us some great starting points. File entropy can be a great example of this. Entropy calculates the frequency of bytes throughout a file. So the more bytes that are seen, if they can end, if they contain a regular frequency, this can show us signs of compression or encryption. While this is not an inherently malicious thing, it is more commonly used by malicious files. Legitimate files have less commonly, less commonly have a reason to compress or encrypt themselves, as you can see in this diagram here. Sometimes the data we need needs to be pulled apart. So we can check it for frequencies of each part. When we look at the functions that are getting imported, sometimes specific combinations are often used by malicious files. And again, this, they may not inherently be evil, but they may raise suspiciousness. Or with file types, as we can see on the screen, UPX is a common compression library. It is most commonly seen with malicious files, though there is a legitimate use for UPX as well. With these models, you can see that the precision is still quite, quite high. So when, you, when we say it's malicious, it often is, but our recall is starting to drop. The difficulty is with, the difficulty is that we can start lowering the threshold for what we call a malicious file and our recall will rise, but as a result, our precision will start to lower. This is where the suspiciousness threshold that we mentioned earlier is very useful. While a model may not directly label something as malicious, two or more models may say that something is suspicious rather than malicious. When we combine the results of all of these models, we can see which executables pass the threshold. So as we wrap all of this up, why are we talking about this? The ACSC is always working on new ways that we can help secure Australia. Hopefully this presentation has shown you that we leverage all of the data that is provided to us from investigations, feeds and services. This enables us to improve services and help you remain secure on the internet. If you want to get more involved with the ACSC, the ACSC Partnership Program enables Australian organisations, both public and private, to engage the ACSC and fellow partners. We work together to lift the cyber resilience across the Australian economy, while facilitating engagement between an extensive community of cybersecurity professionals. The program currently comprises of over 2,000 partners and is delivered through the ACSC's network of joint cybersecurity centres located in Adelaide, Brisbane, Melbourne, Perth and Sydney, along with virtual outreach for Darwin and Hobart. For more information, visit cyber.gov.au. And as always, ASD is always looking to hire more people. If you're interested in a career within the ACSC, please check asd.gov.au slash careers. Thank you very much for having me today.